Eine Woche Lissabon geht zu Ende. Es war eindrucksvoll und spannend. Was jetzt kommt, ist der Versuch, meine Eindrücke zusammenzufassen, auf den Punkt zu bringen und ein paar Menschen zu Wort kommen zu lassen. Wie bringen wir das digitale Business mit Menschlichkeit zusammen? Darum ging es jetzt eine Woche lang äh, im House of Beautiful Business in Lissabon. Und ich habe einige Stimmen eingefangen, äh, einige Eindrücke eingefangen und so einen kleinen Vlog draus gemacht. Ich hoffe, er gefällt euch. Do we wait for education to change? No, I don't think, no. I, I don't think we can wait for that. What will you take home from this week? I, I, I think I've met, I've met some good people here. Um, so the idea of agency for, for employees rather than, so rather than employers taking, you know, kind of giving you stuff, the, the sense of agency from the employees. Um, and that moving into the gig economy. So, so that's what I'll take away. If we want to bring this into action, what we are discussing here about all those great ideas and all the things people have to give, um, do we need another kind of education? Do we change the education system to get into action? Or do you think, no, education system is okay, we, we will do it with the existing thing? It's not preparing our kids for uh, a future that is going to be helpful to them. We don't do any critical thinking, we don't do enough creativity, uh, and it's also preparing them for jobs that you know, won't be the same. I just think it's preparing, it's, it's preparing kids for, for uh, a world that existed 20 years ago, not... So not what one. would you consider do we need, or, or do well, children and young people need? Well, I think more critical thinking taught in schools, and that can be, you know, f from all sorts of things. But all the skills about critical thinking, uh, about, you know, how you break down a problem, what the influences are on that problem, what the power structures behind it. Okay. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's what kids need to be able to evaluate in order to go forward and because I think they're going to be much more in charge of it's not like you come out of school and go in a factory you know they're going to have to be in charge of their lives and careers going forward it'll be a very different relationship in terms of work where you do more stuff your agency is yeah. is you going on to do all the stuff yeah. that makes sense do we wait for education to change no I don't no. think uh, I don't think we can wait for that we have to set up local versions of this effectively you know so so we have to do our own bit rather than it waiting for something yes. like this to come to we need to be doing it where we are okay yeah thank you very much all right thank you That's a really tough one, man. I've, I've worked in seven years in the education business before coming to the energy business. So I, I, I probably have a rather long answer, but the short one has something to do with create more space and let children be more. There's something around the system that is so disconnected with what we've been learning about human development in the last 20 years and so disconnected with the speed at which the world is changing and so disconnected with how naturally curious and inquisitive and self-reliant young ones are and then they go into the educational system and they connect with something that really focuses them on providing the answers for questions that they never asked themselves. And little by little, I think we take some of that natural instinct of learning and curiosity away from them. And Paolo, you're relatively new to GALP and you want to shake up executive education. Why? What's wrong with it? Well, I think it starts with whatever we do in executive education and leadership development is in the service of what we're trying to do with the organization. And GALP operates in the energy space where there's a lot happening. There's immense uh, disruption going on in that space. So for us, we need to revisit what we do in executive education so that we are preparing our leaders for a world that's very difficult to predict, for a world where some of the innovation is going to come from different industries. So we have to open up their minds and, as Ramon's saying, really get them focused 
on what are the questions we need to be asking ourselves. I'm here with two women. This is Luisa and this is Leonie. Please allow me a question. What was the most impressive experience you shared here? I think it was like the first event of the Arts of Gathering of Priya Parka. Thank you and yours? And I think for me it was the feedback room where we gave feedback to each other in a totally different way because we didn't give feedback. Thank you very much. This Hello. is I'm Haley Evans and I'm from New York. What is the biggest difference between New York and Lisbon? Quiet. It is far, far quieter here and slower. Everybody is enjoying the day, going slowly. They're very purposeful. It seems like they're very purposeful in the way that they're going about things. And what is the most impressing um, experience you made until today? It's Tuesday. Um, there's been a lot of people, very cool people, that are very unassuming. So you think that you're talking to a very sort of likewise person, but then you find out that they're the head of something at a massive company. So usually you would be somewhat intimidated by that, but you start talking and it's only way afterwards that you find out that they're very successful people and very non-assuming. So that's been the best. Thank you very much. Ich bin Martin aus Berlin und bin hier als Head of Nothing von The School of Nothing. Ähm, also mein Wunsch wäre natürlich auch kaum vor der School of Nothing. Einfach, das war auch eine Grundidee, weil halt normalerweise Curricula total überladen sind, auch in der Schule viel zu viele Inhalte geliefert werden und zu wenig Raum da ist, dass Dinge auch entstehen können, halt mehr Lehre, mehr Freiraum und Lehre mit Doppel-E.